Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate that. Thank you for subscribing. And for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll consider doing so. Thumbs up to this video and subscribe. It'll help the channel grow. I appreciate the help. Today is National Certified Nurses Day. For those of you who don't know, I am a registered nurse. I'm actually a certified pediatric nurse. I celebrate that every day, but today we're recognized nationally. Also, shout out to all of my RN friends who are certified, and so many of them are. It is great that you took that step to be certified and to demonstrate what you already know you're good at. It's National Poultry Day, National Let's Laugh Day, laugh every day, and National Chocolate Caramel Day. So that's the flavor of the day in my coffee, chocolate caramel. And we're gonna wrap things up later with a chocolate caramel martini. Doesn't that sound yummy? Meanwhile, let's make it a great day and get to crafting. Our first craft is a John 2029 tabletop sign. I picked up this tabletop sign at Dollar Tree and I gave it a coating of the light pale yellow chalk paint and I taped off the chalk side but as I was painting I realized I hadn't taped off the back side so I taped that off as well. The back of it is just a brown cardboard looking which I then decided to give a coat of white chalk paint to finish it off. Well, you think as much as I've been doing this, I would remember to turn my camera on when I'm supposed to, but I forgot again. The, do you remember the technique we did in grade school where we scribbled with our pencil and flipped the paper over and then drew or wrote on it and it um, transferred onto the surface? Well, that's exactly what I did here. I printed out this verse um, off of just regular printing on my printer and then applied the pencil to the back of the paper, flipped it over and traced it onto the chalkboard, and then I used a very fine white marker to go over the printing. I then took two little sprigs of greenery from a boxwood uh, green pick that I had picked up at Dollar Tree and trimmed off two of the little bunches. And I'm placing them here just to see uh, what kind of uh, placement I want. And I made a small shoestring type bow from some satin ribbon and I just adjusted it till I got the size that I wanted and trimmed off the ends to give it a polished look. And the idea was to glue the greenery and then put the bow in the middle. But I decided that the greenery was too, sticking out too far so I cut off the wider piece of the plastic so that I could overlap the pieces easily and hot glued them down. You might notice here I have a new hot glue gun. My old reliable finally bit the dust after 15 or 20 years and I got a new um, Surebonder cordless glue gun and I absolutely love it. But you can see here I glued the greenery in place and make sure you use something to hold it down and not burn your finger. And the same with attaching the bow. A little dab of hot glue and put the bow in place. And I really like the way this turns out. It's, it's probably one of my favorite Bible verses. What about you? It looked so cute, but the back was a little plain. So I decided to add um, some Mod Podge to the back and then I applied a paper napkin. I had just cut it out to fit the square and just lightly rubbed it in place. And there you have it, our John 2029 20, table tent. The next craft is really not a craft. Well, I guess it's a craft, but it's a makeover of the red truck. Now, remember, we decorated it for Christmas and for Valentine's Day. And now it's time to change it up again and do something for spring. So I took everything, all the Valentines out of it, put in some of the foam squares that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And then this greenery, these flowers, I picked up at Dollar Tree also and just trimmed them down and placed them in the foam. No rhyme or reason, just whatever looks good to you. I do find with these 
uh, floral picks from Dollar Tree, when you cut them to a shorter stem and really bunch them to make a dense uh, floral arrangement, it ends up looking so nice. just continued with the florals until I had it looking nice and then I also had three Easter eggs on picks that I put together in a group and stuck into the flowers and I figured after Easter those would be easy enough to pull out and I could just leave the flowers. But there you have it, our red truck for spring. Our next craft is going to be a round riser. For this, I had picked up a wreath of wooden beads from Hobby Lobby. I would picked them up when they were on sale and I really was thinking I would cut them off the loop and use them as wooden beads because beads can be kind of expensive and I figured out this was gonna be cheaper. But then I got the idea to make a round riser and I decided to stain the beads, but first, I took the Waverly Wax in Antique and added water to it because I had seen other crafters use this as a stain. And I was going to use a paintbrush and then I remembered how other crafters had mentioned using baby wipes. So that's what I switched over to. And you can see I put on my gloves for this because it was a little messy, but I loved the color. It came out lovely. Next, I took a green floral wreath form and sealed it with Mod Podge Matte Sealer so that I could paint it and the paint wouldn't be completely absorbed. I gave it a good coating of the Waverly Chalk Paint in Cashew and then gave a dry brushing of the Hazelnut Chalk Paint, also from Waverly. And I went back and forth with the two colors uh, till I got the mixture that I liked. I went a little heavy with the hazelnut, so I needed to add a little more cashew and got the nice mix that I was happy with. And then I decided to use some of that Waverly or that uh, antique wax uh, stain that I had mixed up and do a splatter effect. Now I was doing it with a stick and I think the toothbrush and, and flipping the bristles works better, but I got it done. Next, I took these four napkin holders that I've had forever in the day and painted them with the hazelnut and dry brushed with the antique wax to give it some dimension. Next, I took some black foam core board that I picked up at Dollar Tree and traced the wreath or the, the ring that I painted, and this was gonna form the bottom of the tray. So after I traced it, I cut it out with my um, razor knife, and then after taking off the stickers, I sanded the edges of it. I then took a Sharpie and went around the edge of it to color the white that was showing through and to make that black. Next, I applied hot glue to the foam core board round and then attached the wreath form to that. I attached the wooden bead wreath to that as well. And of course, I guess I've lost that footage, forgot to turn the camera on, I'm not sure. I'm really gonna have to work on getting better at that. Next, I took some jute cord and I measured out how much it took to go around the circumference of the riser. And I actually took three strands of the jute twine that was that long. And I didn't braid it, I just glued it in place to start it and then twisted as I was gluing around the ring to give it a little bit of a twisted look, but not a braided look.
when I got to the end of the ring, I just trimmed off the excess and then pushed the end down in some hot glue to get it to seal up nicely. Again, remember to use some sort of metal or spatula and don't push it in with your fingers. When possible, I like to give my pieces a finished look on the back side as well. So I decided to add a single strand of the jute twine between the bead and the foam core board just to kind of polish off that seam a little bit. Again, trim off any excess and push the end down into the glue. Now all that's left is to attach the legs, the napkin rings. So I'm gonna glue all four of those in place using the hot glue. There you have it, our round riser. Now it's time for a delicious chocolate caramel martini. For this cocktail, you're going to need kissed caramel vodka, creme de cacao, half and half, your crushed ice, your martini glass chilling, and your crushed ice in your shaker, and also Kahlua. You will need Kahlua for this recipe as well. You'll add your vodka, your creme de cacao, your half and half, and your Kahlua all to the shaker. If you like white Russians, you'll probably love this drink and it's a great dessert drink. You're gonna shake, shake, shake until it's well chilled. And then you'll pour it into your chilled martini glass. This drink is garnished with a little bit of sweetened cocoa mix. And you can use Nestle's Quick even for this. But enjoy your chocolate caramel martini. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. I really do appreciate that. Let's make it a great week. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. See you next Friday.